Magic's new never rotating corset foundations is finally here. Can we open some sweet Japanese showcase cards? Maybe a super expensive fractured foil? Well, let's crack open some boxes and find out. All right, so it is finally foundations time. And I gotta say, I am super excited for this set. I've always loved corsets. I feel like corsets are just good for the game anyway, because they give us a place to reprint stuff that doesn't fit into other sets. But this one is especially sweet because the new cards are super sweet. The reprints are super sweet. Plus, it's not going to rotate like forever. So these cards are going to be important for standard for a long, long time. And there's some really expensive stuff we can open. So going to be going to be interesting to see how this sets goes. So uh, yeah, foundations booster number one. Super curious how other people are interacting with this set. Are you picking up foundation boxes? There is some expensive stuff. The biggest hits are, I think, Japanese showcase cards and the fractured foil versions in specific. Ooh, Vivian Emblem, looking good in foil. Not a ton at the lower rarity. Soulstone Sanctuary. I don't know if this card's good or not. <clears throat> a creature land that's all creature types, very powerful. Remaining a creature is a bit of a bit of a concern. Banner of Kinship. <clears throat> I feel like Manner of Kinship, at a minimum, going to be good for Commander. Kind of like a better Coat of Arms. Preposterous proportions. I feel like this card's just actively not good. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you make it work in a token deck. But without any evasion, I feel like plus 10, plus 10 to everything is not that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Foil. Liliana Dreadhorde General. Looking good. I love this card. I don't know how good it'll be this time in Standard. But it is a very powerful Planeswalker. Mossborn Hydra and all right down to the lower rarity stuff so the big lower rarity hits uh, this might be worth a little something our new uh blood artist effect i think the big lower rarity hit is the hair apparent that you can play any number of rabbit common that is uh by far the most valuable and then i think the new lava spike is the bolt bolt something bolt bend it takes me a little while to remember all the card names especially this set that's like woo, wow wow look at that Look at that. So that's not Fractured Foil, but that is a super sweet anime or Japanese progenitus. That art looks so good. It looks so, look at it shimmering foil. Man, what a card. <laughs> We're gonna have to build a <clears throat> progenitus deck in standard and see, <laughs> see if we can make it work. It is a lot of man. Oh, wow, that's even a better hit. Bloodthirsty Conqueror. Pretty sure this is the most expensive card in the set. As far as just, like, main set cards, uh, I think this card might be good. Combo P's and a 5-5 five, five Flying Body. Uh, you can do all the, like, Sanguine Bond, Exquisite Blood shenanigans. Plus, there's some combos with it in Standard. Black has so many random com uh, combos in Standard. Lunar Insight. Mudrotha, pretty popular commander. Curator of Destinies, Planes, and do we have any hair appearance? Do we have a hair apparent? Do we have no no hairs? <laughs> well, that was a that was a good pack. That was a really good pack. That progenitus looks so good. I bet it would look even better in fractured foil. So, what do you think of a core set that never rotates? Also, why is my mic dropping? There we go. All right, Mike, stay. Um, I think it's a ghost. Uh, what do you think of a core set that never rotates? I've heard mixed things. I like that core sets are, ooh, new Alenda, Alenda, Saint of Dusk, Azure Animist, Crystal Barricade. This is also, I think, the most expensive rare in the set. Giving yourself X-Proof, not bad. And then the second ability, preventing all non-combat damage to creatures you control, eh, other creatures you control. Relevant against, like, Pyroclasm and stuff. I think this card at least will see sideboard play in standard. Consuming Aberration. Sky Knight Squire. I think this card could be really good too. Getting a plus one, plus one counter whenever a creature enters and not saying non-token means that this can get super big, super fast. Something like Jeskai Convoke, I think. Cool. I just love, I love all the reprints. This sounds like very nostalgic. I feel like, so there's upsides and downsides, right? To a set being in standard for five years. The downside is it might get boring after a while that four years from now, we're playing with the same cards. Five years from now, we're playing in the same with the same cards. So that's the downside. The upside is it lets Wizards kind of lay a foundation for the format, right? We always know there's going to be some sort of reanimation, some sort of blood artist effect. Like it just lets you build off of this set with future sets and hopefully make standard. Wow, another one. Okay. <laughs> Bloodthirsty Conquer number two. This is 
a pretty awesome box so far. <laughs> the best mythic in the set twice already in like three packs. Blasphemous Edict, also one of the better rares in the set. I feel like this is better than people think in Commander and still like not insane. I think it's a good wrath. It's a good wrath. I do think getting 13 creatures to get the the discount is going to be maybe more challenging than people think. Electro duplicate. Wow, double. <laughs> Apparently, we're going to be playing some uh, Blasphemous Edicts in the future, since we got two of them. A high fee Trickster Island, Rexage. It's a nice-looking treatment. I love some of the treatments on the reprints, too. Like, Rexage, it's not a valuable card, right? It's been reprinted a bunch. It is a playable card, though, in Commander and even in Modern a little bit. So, nice to get a sweet art treatment on it. And that's one of the things I love about this set is, like, even the not-super-exciting cards are still, like, nostalgic, High Society Hunter. Wait, is that? Oh, look at that. Look at that foiling. Oh, wow. Wait, this has to be like fractured foil, right? I think. Look at those mana symbols. That has to be fractured. Oh, that's so cool looking. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a High Society Hunter, which I don't think is that great of a card. But the foiling, that's got to be some sort of special foil. I didn't think that was fractured, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's fractured foil. Kiora, the Rising Tide. Another Crystal Barricade, looking good in Extended Border. Nine Lives Familiar, preposterous proportions. <laughs> the Squirrels will rule the world. Another Rex Age, Meteor Golem. So yeah, I'm curious, let me know in the comments. Like, so discounting the set and the cards in the set, which obviously there's some cool cards in the set, but what do you think of the impact on Standard? That's, that's something I'm very curious about. If people are hyped for it or dreading it, exemplar of light whenever you get in life put a plus one plus one counter on this creature whenever one or more plus one plus one counters or put on this creature draw a card this only triggers once per turn four minute three three flyer eh, could be okay in a wait they don't all have that yeah that's definitely no mana symbols in that foil like that's definitely i don't think it's fractured though new goma extended archmage of runes this card i think is going to be super popular in commander spell reduction and draw a card when we cast insert sorcery no ones per turn or anything you pay four mana just for the, what is it, a four mana 2-2 two, two Archmage Emeritus? Just for the card draw boat. So you pay one more mana, you get a 3-6 and a cost reduction on your spells. Flame Lake Phoenix. Ah, oh, man, it makes me wish we could go back to the original days of Hollow One. Painful Quandary, already in standard. Swifty, Dust Boots, Shiv and Dragon. How the Mighty Have Fallen. Hilariously. I don't know, you probably know this story if you've been playing Magic for a while. So Shiv and Dragon, originally from Alpha, right? From the original Magic set. Back in its day, it was as expensive as Black Lotus. It was honestly a fair trade back in like 1993, 1994, to trade your, <laughs> your Shiv and Dragon for a Black Lotus. That would not be a ripoff. That was just a straight up fair trade. Now, Black Lotus sells for house money. <laughs> and Shivan Dragon is an uncommon in Foundations. <laughs> How the magic world has changed over the past 30 years. Oh, and Dragon. Are these double-sided? Oh, they are. Double double Dragon. Okay, you to, to choose your... Oh, one's a 5-5, five, five, one's a 4-4. Four, four. New Kaikar. Foil extended. Itali Primal Storm. OG Itali. OG Itali is a cool card. Sylvan Scavenging. I'm not sure if this card's good or not. It does a lot when you're already doing a lot. But if you get Wrath or something and have nothing going on, it does much less. Homunculus Horde. <laughs> oh, so many flibble fibs. I guess they're just generic homunculi, but... <laughs> Galta, Primal Hunger. Curious if Galta... Youthful Valkyrie. Curious if uh, this thing... <laughs> oh, speaking... So back in the day... Going back to Alpha again, back in the uh, in Alpha, there was a card called Crawl Worm that was like one of the biggest Timmy cards, just a a six mana green six four. Now in Foundations, we get Quake Strider Ceratops, which is literally double the stats, a twelve eight, just a vanilla twelve eight for six mana, and hilariously, it's still not going to see any play. <laughs> it's still just bad. How big would a creature have to be? I think for just a vanilla creature to see play. We've seen a little bit of uh, Multani and Yargle, right? See play, like, in very fringe situations. I think once a creature hits 20 power, then it's uh, then it's in the conversation, at least. Just because of flings and so forth. Cr uh, scrawling Crawler. I feel like this is actually one of the more valuable rares in the set. Quilled Great Worm. Uh, if you can keep this on the battlefield, it makes combat 
absolutely a nightmare. Another homunculus horde, Rune Scar Demon, the reprint, Seer Slicer Golem, uh, Goblin. I feel like this is a good mono red card. The problem is mono red. Ooh, fancy, fancy a braid. The problem is mono red is more of like a pump spell deck, and that's not really a pump spell kind of card. So I'm not sure how good it's going to be in like the current standard versions of mono red. But I feel like it's, I feel like it's a good card. We'll have to see one of the most in Ooh, blasphemous edict number three in foil leyline leyline X was not expecting an equipment leyline in this that another banner of kinship new alicia alicia who laughs at fate i feel like alicia could also be pretty solid it is annoying that it dies to cut down into shock and a burst lightning that is an issue but if you make it to your end step in the right deck even if you reanimate one two drop it's pretty good and if it sticks around it's really good more tallies where's all of our hair appearance we're getting zero value and throwing around <laughs> all of our lower rarity cards. What do we got? Three more packs to go. I feel like this has already been a decent box. Just based on hitting those, uh, the mythic vampire combo piece thing. Ooh, shiny rat. Leyline. Ooh, look at, is that? No. Wait, oh yeah, that's the, so this has got to be fractured foil, right? I thought fractured foil looked differently, but this mana symbol foiling, unfortunately. No, this can't be fractured foil. What is the traditional foil, fractured foil, traditional foil. Oh, mana. Okay. 17 mana foil rare. Okay. This is mana foil. So it's not fractured foil. It's another special treatment. The mana symbols. Ooh, twin flame tyrant. This is also part of that mythic cycle. One of the, one of the most expensive cards, five mana, three, five, double your damage. So it's actually like a six, five. Seems reasonable and extended. Tana Bones, Bobble Burglar, and ooh, Kaido, new Kaido. Gonna have double Kaido in standard. Both caring about ninjas. Loot, new loot, exuberant explorer. I gotta say, and this might be controversial, I kinda, I kinda dislike loot. <laughs> I kind of dislike Lou. It feels so forced to me. It feels like Watsy decided they needed a Pikachu and then they made Lou to be their Pikachu. But uh, Pikachu wouldn't be Pikachu if it was intended to be Pikachu, right? It happened organically. I don't know. It just it feels weird to me. Lou feels weird. What is this card? Zolashar Lichlord. Two mana, two, two. War to pay two life. Tap. Cast a zombie creature card from your graveyard this turn. Eh. The ward helps. It still dies to everything, but at least your opponent takes some damage. Another Alicia, another Sky Knight Squire, Scavenging Ooze. I feel like this should be reasonable and standard again. Slag Storm. Three damage to each creature, three damage to each player. It is nice that you can hit face with uh, Slag Storm. One of the upsides of Slag Storm compared to similar cards. Still no hair appearance. All right, one more pack. Can we get a hair apparent? Maybe the hair appearance are going to be rarer than I think. All right. Last pack of box one, cat token, ash root animist. I feel like this could be a good card. It just doesn't really have a home. Another soulstone sanctuary, celestial armor. Could see some commander play. Man, a lot of banner kin uh, kinships. Time stop. <sighs> I don't know if I'm happy this is returning to standard. The art is, wow, look at that weird foiling in the face. Is that a misprint? Wait, is that blue on the face normal? It's very noticeable in foil. It's got to be. It's got to be intended. Hair of Barrett. Can we get a hair of Barrett? Can we get a hair? <laughs> Lanor Elves. It's, I'm going to be very curious as we go into box number two. I'm going to be very curious. Is green back in standard? So we got Lanor, which is huge. We got Colta, which is huge. Like, Wizards knows. They know that green has sucked in standard for two years and black has dominated. They are giving us some of the all time best green cards. Like, like cards that should make green really good in standard is it going to be enough that is that is the question that is the question all right first pack of box two Ooh, vivian reed looking nice in foil i think they had pretty good planeswalker selections more leashes arabo the first fang you're gonna be playing this one on a commander clash i think i got a sneaky way to build this in commander i think i think actually so it looks like a generic like cat tribal commander a johnny might be good with Undead Slasher. Actually, just a one-shot kill with Undead Slasher, right? Double strike it. Hit ya, hit ya. Ah, actually, I have to math it. I don't know if it's actually a one-shot kill, but it's it's pretty close. Draycatcher. And still no hair appearance. But I think that the new Rabo, I think it's actually a combo commander. But uh, you're going to have to watch Commander Clash in a couple weeks to uh, to see. See if the combo even works. But that's how I'm building a Rabo is as a commander, is a combo commander. Ooh, Kaido Emblem. 
And, ooh, Alicia with the mana symbols. I wonder if the mana symbol foils, I don't know if they're, I know the fractured foils are worth a ton. I feel like the mana symbol foil is probably worth more than normal foils, but I don't know if they're super expensive. New Niv, Niv Mizzet, Visionary. No max hand size, whenever Surge deals combat damage to an opponent, non-combat damage to an opponent. You draw that many cards. That is actually kind of insane if you untap with it. <laughs> like Lightning Bolt turns into Ancestral. Cool, yeah. Ah, uh, that seems pretty good. Spinner of Souls, Thousand Year Storm. I love Thousand Year Storm. Thousand Year Storm's never good. But it is, that looks very interesting in foil. I actually like that land. The art's sweet. Um, Youthful Valkyrie again. Bushwhack and Prison of the Moon. Yeah, it'll be it'll be sweet to see the impact. But yeah, what do you think of Mono Green? Is Mono Green back? Or like, is the problem with Mono Green that the black removal is just too strong and it doesn't really matter how good they're... Wow. Wow. Wait. That is, okay, these are super rare. So I don't think this is, I think this is traditional foil. So this is Japanese showcase of the Red Mythic Dragon we opened a minute ago. Uh, I know the fractured foil is like 300 bucks or something. Not sure traditional foil. I still imagine just based on how rare these are, especially in Japanese, because you get the English ones more often than Japanese and English boosters. I imagine this has got to be super expensive. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what it does. Well, I do because I know the card, but it doesn't really look like a magic card. It looks like, I don't know, Digimon or something, but wow. What an open. What an open. Quill great. What a pack. <laughs> no, they're Wow, there it is. Okay. They're... <laughs> uh, yes. Twin Flame Tyrant. Two in one pack. Japanese Showcase. Traditional foil. Pack foil. <laughs> That might be like a hundred dollar pack, two hundred, two hundred dollars. We might have just paid for this entire box with that one pack. <laughs> uh, the only thing that would have made it better is if it had been a fractured foil. Fractured foil worth even more, but cannot complain. Cannot complain. Wow, double, double dragon pack. <laughs> How good do you think the dragon will be? The funny thing about the mythic cycle. What is this sign of the deep? What even makes that? Oh, the new Kiora. Sears Laser Golem, Mossmorn Hydra, Exemplar of Light, Sky Knight Squire, Blas we got a lot of Blasphemous Edicts, so many Blasphemous Edicts, so many. So do you think the Mythic Cycle is going to be good? Uh, they have very powerful static abilities, right? You're getting like Furnace of Wrath and Exquisite Bloods or Sanguine Mods, so they're very powerful, but they don't do anything right away. They are, they are creatures that kind of need to sit out for a turn to really do their thing. A lot of Leyline Axes. I feel like Leyline Axe is probably not very good. It's cool that it can start on the battlefield, but when you actually think through how... So, so many preposterous... I feel like we had this exact same pack before. Ooh, that's a nice boots. That's going into Commander deck. That is a very nice version of Swiftfoot Boots. Balmore. We actually got to spoil that card forever ago. Balmore is like okay. It never caught on in Standard, but it's not the worst Spellslinger card. I feel like this box is already a winner just because of that one pack. This card's kind of out of order here. Sticking up a bit. All right, what do we get? Goblin. Ooh. God. Ooh. Oh, wow. Wait, is that fractured foil? Look at this down here. What is... Why is that in the... Oh, that's just part of the art under the text box? So not fractured foil, but still. Mm. Kaido. Looking, looking good. Soul Stone Sanctuary. Lunar Insight. Jamon. Painful Quandary. Ooh. Hero's Downfall. So funny that... When this card was first printed, so it's a decade ago, so much history in these packs. <laughs> when Heroes Downfall was first printed in Theros, it was actually like a format defining card, a jaw dropping card, because Wizards didn't print Planeswalker removal. Like that, what that wasn't a thing. Like for the first five, six years of Planeswalkers in Magic, they didn't believe in being able to just target them with a spell and kill them. So when they printed Heroes Downfall, it was actually like four of every black deck every deck you could play it in one of the best cards that existed in standard it's another card kind of like shim and dragon we talked about earlier that went from being one of the best cards in the format to being <laughs> a random uncommon <laughs> high fate trickster nine lives familiar drake catcher abyssal harvester i feel like this card is very powerful but again <sighs> Maybe I put too much weight in this, but when a three drop that needs to untap to do things dies to shock and cut down, I'm a little skeptical for standard. 
I feel like that might be that just might be a deal breaker, just like how it lines up. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, dice to Doom Blade. We need everything dies to Doom Blade. That's not true with Cut Down and Shock, though. <laughs> yes, everything dies to Doom Blade. So it's in some ways a silly argument. On the other hand, not everything dies to cut down. You can play things that do not die to cut down. You can play three toughness things that do not die to shock. So that's the that's the difference there. So many ley line axes. We can we can chill. Ooh, wow. Look at that mask. I don't know the, the lore of Liliana's mask, but that is pretty cool looking. Zulusher, Lich Lord, another one of the zombies, consuming aberration. We fit a lot we fit a lot of ley line axes in a lot of Soulstone sanctuaries so far. And zero. Zero hair. Hey, there we go. There we go. <laughs> the most important open in the entire box. <laughs> hair apparent. Look at that art. Look at that cute little bunny. <laughs> I feel like as far as you could play any number cards go, I feel like hair appearance actually one of the one of the better ones. I don't think it's like insane, but I think it's one of the better one of the better versions of it. Ooh, Giada. Giada, fun of hope. So one of the coolest things about this set, and one of the things I'm most excited about, is to see if tribal decks will be good. I feel like that's one of the things Wizards has intentionally done with this set. If you just look through Foundations, you see the pieces to build an elf deck, the pieces to build an angel deck, the pieces to build a goblins deck. Uh, Murfolk got a bunch of stuff that might make it standard playable. Going to be very interesting because in Bloomboro, right, it had a strong tribal theme. But outside of, like, basically lizards... who Bushwhacker, special guest. I am hyped for this coming to Arena. We can finally... We can finally do some 8-whacking on Arena. We've been missing one of our one of our 8-whacks, but Goblin Bushwhacker changes that. Valkyrie's Call. This card's very expensive. I don't think it's very good in Standard. Maybe it is. Ah, it's 5 mana. And it's an enchantment, and people are ready for enchantment. Seems good in Commander, though. Just whenever a non-angel dies, return it... <laughs> Return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh, only creatures you control. But you're turning back to play with plus one, plus one counter, and it has flying in as angel. So essentially, like, a weird luminous... Oh, a weird luminous broodmoth enchantment. Doubling season. I'm honestly surprised they put doubling season in standard. Maybe it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Maybe it doesn't matter because there's already uh, innkeeper's talent, which is very similar once you level it up. But I feel like doubling season is borderline scary for a card that never rotates or it doesn't rotate for at least five years or whatever it ends up being nice little rabbit token high society hunter no mana symbols coma world eater celestial armor another giada so yeah oh elvish archer so this is one of the big elves right between what's on my finger oh blister that's awkward um so i feel like between lanawar and elvish arch druid it's like turn one lanawar turn two arch druid that should be a thing, right? That should be a thing that we can do in standard. Maybe it doesn't matter because it all ends in, with a sunfall anyway. <laughs> and despite your best your best hopes, you're just going to get wrath. But if this set does not make green good and make elves good, then I feel like it's just never it's just never going to happen. Ton of bones. Ooh, that's a nice Phyrexian arena. Does this beat out original apocalypse in my commander decks? Maybe. Maybe. Raise the past. Gonna have to do some aristocrating. Leyline Leyline Axe. Our friend Leyline Axe. So many Leyline Axes. Alright. Well, I think that was a good box. Ooh. I think it was bad that I hit the camera. Um, I think it was a good box just because of that double dragon pack. That double dragon Come on, stop hitting the camera. I think that double dragon pack was just so good that it probably carries that entire box, really. All right, box number three. So what have we not gotten? We have not gotten a Fractured Foil Japanese Showcase card. That is, those are the biggest opens in the set. No serialized card. Fractured Foil Japanese Showcase is the replacement. Sky Knight Square, Azure Animus. Leyline X, of course. <laughs> Scavenging is Cranko Mob Boss. Cranko really needs haste. There's not a there's not a great way for a goblin deck to give Krenko haste in standard. If we get that, then I think goblins might actually be kind of legit in standard. Currently though, currently though, missing the haste and Krenko's a lot less preposterous uh, without haste. Blasphemous edict, exemplar of light. I wonder if this is good enough. It seems good in a life gain deck. I just don't know if at four mana it's too slow. Niv, I think, is going to be popular in Commander. Authority of the Consoles. Coming back to Standard for the first time in a minute. 
Another land more. Ooh, here a parrot. Here a parrot. That's two. So we only need what? Like 28 more and we can build a deck. <laughs> Come on, collector boosters. You can do you can do it. We need to open like one hair apparent per pack <laughs> for the rest of our opening. And then we can build a hair apparent deck. Maybe we gotta do a even planning number tier list sometime. Kaikar! Coma! Homunculus Horde. Ooh, Rise of the Dark Realms. I mean, it's a game ender in Commander. If you resolve one of these, you will probably win the game. Kellen, part 40. <laughs> Speaking of things, though, not the not the biggest loot fan. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just a boomer. But not the biggest fan of loot. Also, Kellen, I'm kind of like, I don't know. Like, why is this dude in every set now? <laughs> Although the new Kellen, the one drop Kellen, I think is the best. As far as competitive play, is the best Kellen they printed so far. I don't know. I just, eh. Ooh, a tally. Primal Storm. Still popular in Commander. We can build a Tally Tribal in Standard now. They have Judgment. This is one of those surprising cards. Like, just a four mana. Oh, Genesis Wave. We are going to do some waving in Standard for sure. Um, Day of Judgment is one of those cards that it surprised me that they would make it never rotate. I feel like here's my here's my philosophy and we're gonna have to talk a little bit universes beyond as we get into this so we know that next year 600 sets a year universes beyond standard legal i think that when i first saw lana Elves day of judgment uh, and now the rest of this foundation set my thought was wow they're ooh, right of the dragon collar i don't know if this card is very good for standard but probably fun in a spell slinger commander deck but my first thought was wow they're actually really powering up standard and they announced all this before they announced the universe is beyond stuff now that we see the full picture what i think is happening is wizards is amping up the power of standard and this stuff that was formerly off the table land or elves day of judgment four man arrest god dang it these friggin ley line axes <laughs> <laughs> so many so many so many hey it's me draku seth ah, probably better known as mob flames <laughs> i couldn't resist hopefully we hopefully we don't uh, open more draku says so i don't do that joke again uh be good be good packs uh so i think that it's intentional i think wizards is intentionally powering up standard and some of the stuff that was a little weird like lana War elves and day of judgment now makes a lot of sense in the context of what they're doing with standard with a standard set every two months universe is beyond legal and standard so i think standard i'm actually kind of hyped for it Ooh, valkyrie skull i feel like this card is pretty expensive and this is one of the better versions of it this i think is a hit this set's very weird because it's so big lathril most popular elf commander probably not gonna make it in standard i don't think elves wants to go into black in standard Ooh, offer you can't refuse i think this is actually expensive i think out of the lower rarity showcase cards pretty sure because this is like very cdh playable or whatnot i'm pretty sure that is actually an expensive one so yeah it'll be interesting i'm very hyped for standard actually i think that standard next year is going to be super interesting and super fun to brew in i like bigger formats and uh, it's, it's going to be wild it's going to be wild Ah, I know there's downside. Oh, oh God. Oh, 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 not fractured foil. But that is, that is a Llanowar Elf. What do you think of this Llanowar Elf compared to just like the normal magic version? I'm not an anime fan. It doesn't really look like a magic card, but that still just looks, I think it looks really cool. I wonder if it's worth anything. Llanowar Elf's like a 50 cent card because it's been reprinted so many times, but that is... I imagine people are going to want that for their commander deck or whatever. It might be one of the more blinged versions. But yeah, I think standard's going to be sweet. And the uh, the universe is beyond stuff. I feel like Final Fantasy fits pretty well in Magic. So I'm not too worried about that one. Marvel, I, I don't know X-Men. <laughs> so Marvel, I don't know how well that fits in Magic. I think that's going to be part of what it comes down to like loot herald of eternal dawn hype for this card too flash platinum angel seems kind of sweet <laughs> you can just it's seven mana it's so much mana to leave up but boy you can get people with this card if you flash it in celestial armor chandra flame shaper is this card even good seven mana six loyalty plus two 
Add triple red. Excellent top three cards to your library. Choose one you play this turn. Plus one. Create a token that's copy target creature you control except as hate something being in the air and step you sag it. Negative four, eight damage. Device you choose among any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. Eh. Seven mana. If it was six mana. It does have a lot of loyalty, though. It's going to be hard to get off the battlefield. So maybe it's... Eh, I don't know. I feel like for the amount of mana it is, it might be a little underpowered. But maybe it'll be better. Maybe it'll be better than I think. So I feel like that's going to be part of how the universe is beyond stuff works. When it's IPs that just kind of flow. Like, Lord of the Rings is one of the best-selling magic sets. And I think it fit really well. So I think that's one that is almost universally beloved. So I think a lot of the... Ooh, Fiend Art... Oh, Oh, I didn't even notice this was a special guest. A Fiend Art is in special guest. That is some um, super creepy art. Uh, I don't know if it's worth that much, though. Fiend Artisan was a card that was pretty hyped and then never really caught on. It's seen a little play in some, like, fringe decks, postmodern Horizons 3 and Modern, thanks to, oh, no, White of the Reliquary, those shenanigans, but but still, not a not a ton. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's what's going to determine the... Ooh, ho, ho. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's like a hundred dollar bill. I'm pre is that scratched, or is that the art? I guess that's just like part of the art. That card looks so sweet. I love how they formatted this card. Just like the straight down one mechanic on each line. Sire of Seven Deaths, seven mana, seven seven, seven mechanics all in a row. Ward of Seven Life. It is oh, it's just like the perfect, the perfect French vanilla card, and it just looks so. Look at that. Oh. Mm, mm. I don't know where I'm gonna play it, but that is a nice looking card. I just love the choice and putting the mechanics in the middle. Like the formatting, so good, so unique. Niv, Arabo, Loot, Slagstorm, and I mean nothing else in this pack matters because we hit we hit the big one. We hit the big one. Well, last pack of the box. Thankfully, we hit that Eldrazi. Or this this box might have been our worst box. I think that might carry it though. What do we get? Anthem of Champions. Hey, there we go. Bloodthirsty Conqueror. We've done pretty well hitting those. That's our third. Pretty good for being a mythic. Time Stop. I don't know if I'm excited or dreading Time Stop in Standard. I played against a, <laughs> a mono blue turns deck in Pioneer the other day. Oh my god, it was so obnoxious. It was one of the most annoying decks. And now we get to do it in Standard. The good news is... There's nothing I love more in Magic than annoying my opponents. So <laughs> my first thought was, oh god, I don't want to play against this deck. My second thought was, I'm gonna have to build I'm gonna have to build this deck. <laughs> so time stop in standard. It's at least gonna lead to funny moments. It shouldn't be too good, right? It shouldn't be too good. We had discontinuity, and that never really saw meaningful standard play. Box number four, key or the rising die. Nine lives familiar, right? Catcher. Does boots. I feel like we. We've reached the point in our box openings that we're getting a lot of reprints. We're seeing the same the same cards, which is funny because this set's huge. I feel like it's adding, what, 600 cards to standard? It might be more than that. Although you can't get them all in booster po uh, packs. Some of them are part of, like, the starter kit or whatever. Our buddy Kellen. Kellen Planner Trailblazer. This is another card that I feel like should be good in mono red, but I don't know if it works in the current pump spell. Ooh, Kaito. I don't know if it works in the current pump spell heavy builds of of mono red though. A lot of was, it, was that a four mythic pack, Chandra? Oh, that's a rare. Okay, three, no nah, two, two mythics. All right, not even close. Kellen's Kellen's just a rare. Heroes downfall, again. Hair apparent? No hair apparent. Have both of our hair appearance been the very last card in the pack? I'm pretty sure. If I remember right, we've opened two, and I'm pretty sure they were both the very last card. Right, hair apparent? No refute. Even this is kind of wild. Like, this shows how the baseline of... The baseline of standard has risen, right? For a long time, Cancel was the baseline counter spell. Just three mana counter a spell. Now the baseline, for at least the next five years, is Cancel, but you get to loot. <laughs> so it's just... Magic is getting stronger. Standard is getting stronger. The entire, the entire game. Gleaming Barricade's not a bad hit. Spectral Sailor. Burst Lightning, I think, is a nice a nice standard reprint. People are already playing Shocks and Burst Lightning. I know Strictly Better is a controversial term. Whenever you say Strictly Better, 
there's always someone that does the well actually <laughs> Actually, if you're at 74 in life and it's on turn 8 and you have exactly 3 lands, then shock could situationally be better, so it's not strictly better. <laughs> but in this case, I think Burst Lightning actually is just strictly better. Sky Knight. Spinner. Extravagant Replication. A fun card. So fun card to get jamming Commander decks. Very slow for standard. And off I you can't refuse. But it is a fun commander card. So far, this box has been kind of floppy. I feel like, have we hit anything out of box four so far? I feel like we have not. I feel like it's just been a whiff. Although we've ran well enough in past boxes that... Ooh, solemn. I will say, when you reprint... When you reprint invitational cards... If you don't know the story of Solemn, back in the day, they did a tournament called Invitational. If you won the tournament, your reward was you get to make a magic card. So, uh, that's where Solemn Simulacrum came from. An invitational winner decided to make Solemn Simulacrum. Uh, one of the part of the rewards, kind of like the world's cards these days, is you're in the art. So, the original Sad Robot art featured the invitational winner. The reprint, though, is just a random robot that doesn't even look sad. So, I wish they would keep the invitational winner in the art when it, when it comes to invitational cards. Same with the world championship cards. It feels just, I feel like a Lenda could be good in standard. It feels a little disrespectful, right? Ooh, another Twin Flame Tyrant. We have hit pretty well with the expensive Mythics in these boxes. We've got at least three of the black ones, three of the three of the red ones. We might actually just be killing it. These boxes might actually be really good. We've just not got a Fractured Foil. But the Fractured Foils are 1% of packs. So I'm not even sure the odds are in favor of us getting one. Even opening five boxes, they're just so rare. So rare. Well, this box, yeah. This box has been, I mean, I guess we got the dragon. But I feel like, I feel like this is our weakest box yet. Unless we hit something in these last four packs. We still got one more to go, though. But if this is our weakest box, the next one should be our best box, right? Lunar, Lunar Insight. I'm still not sure how good this card is. But boy, that looks, that art is so cool. That art is really cool. Got the mana symbols in there. But just like the art in general, very sweet. Uh, I don't know if that card's good or not. Its floor is low because if you have no no permanence, no non-land permanence, it does nothing. But the ceiling is like draw a lot of cards for three mana. If you can consistently draw three, another great word. If you can consistently draw three, I think it's uh, I think it's very good. So if you can build a deck where you consistently draw three, but it has a little bit of the same problem as that green, whatever, Sylvan Scavenging Enchantment, where post-Wrath, it's kind of a dead card. So I do wonder if maybe it's not going to be consistent enough to see play. It should see Commander play, at least. I think it's very good in Commander. Coma, World Eater. How good is new Coma? I mean, can't be countered board four means it is going to be annoying to deal with at least. And if it hits you, it makes four three threes. If you're actually getting a hit with it, it's kind of ridiculous. Ooh, doubling season. Number two. We will take all the... Ah, oh, it's cool to see Vampire Nighthawk back. For an uncommon, I feel like if you were playing back in Zendikar era, this is maybe one of the most iconic Zendikar cards. I guess the, the fetch lands. The fetch lands are probably number one. The fetch lands are probably number one. But outside of Fetchlands, I guess Goblin Guide's pretty iconic. I don't know. When I think of Zendikar, I think of Vampire Nighthawk. Maybe it's mostly because of Limited. Ooh, boy. As well as we've run with Mythics, we have run poorly with Special Guests. <laughs> Condemn. Not very good. I mean, it was uh, Herald of Eternal Dawn, something at least. Swift, wait. Swift Blade Vindicators in this set? I didn't even realize this was... <laughs> this set's so big. And I was in Vegas for the start of spoilers. Every once in a while, I see a card. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where did you come from? Where did you come sw from, Swift Bait Vindicator? All right. We need we need to hit something in these last two packs. Or box four is going to be the worst. The worst of our boxes. <laughs> All right. Lanowar Elves. English version this time. Uh, not Fractured Foil. It would be nice if we could open some uh, non-commons in that slot. A Johnny Caller of the Pride. I bet a Johnny sees play. Like, it's been a while since we got to uh, talk about opening yet another Leyline Axe. All right, I know. Ooh, that Pride Mate. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of this on Arena. Arena players love their life game decks. All right, well, one more pack. One more pack. Fractured Foil. 
Fractured Foil, Mythic Vampire Dude, whose name I don't remember. Blood something, like every vampire. All right, here we go. Here we go. Tiny Bones, not fractured anything. Exemplar of Light, Homunculus Horde, Laying Line Axe, hooray! <laughs> Offer you can't refuse, that might, that might be worth a few bucks. Anything new. No. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say box four, our worst box. Again, I don't know the prices because I do them at the end, so maybe it's better than I think, but I think it's the worst of our boxes. However, there's good news, which is we have one box to go, and it should be our best box, right? That's how this works. If you get really unlucky, just keep gambling because your luck is bound to change because that's how probability works. <laughs> oh, all right, last box. Last box of Foundations. Lunarins. Ah, oh, yes. Sire of Seven Deaths. Non-foil, but still, I think this card is pretty expensive, even a non-foil. And it just looks so nice. Crystal Barricade. Rise of the Dark Realms. And... The, funny, the funniest part of this box so far, or these boxes, we've gotten two hair appearance, the common, <laughs> but we've gotten like three copies of some of the best mythics. So apparently in collector boosters, it's actually harder to open a common than it is to open a mythic. Kellen, more Kellens, Homunculus Horde, Banner of Kinship, Time Stop, Cranko. I feel like there's some cards we've just, oh, hair apparent, hair apparent. There we go. Number three. There it is. The bunnies will rule. I feel like uh, this set's this set's pretty awesome. I'm so hyped for this set. We're gonna have so many cool decks to build. Even like the bad cards, Thousand Year Storms and Genesis Wave, or cards that aren't like super competitive, are gonna be fun to build around. It's a nice looking showcase. Rise of the Dark Realms. Spinner of Souls. Ton of Bones. Authority of the Consoles. Another Kellen. We're catching all the Kellens now. And our last boxes. I really want to just see a fractured foil. I just want to see one. It doesn't even have to be a good one, Wizards. Just, just give us a fractured foil so we can see what it looks like in our boxes. Arabo and the Machampions. Sky Knight Squire, Day of Judgment. An offer you can't refuse. I'm gonna have to look up the offers you can't refuse. I feel like they're actually like ten plus dollars, which I think makes it the best lore rarity card. If you have the showcase one, the showcase one in specific, not all of them, but the showcase one, I feel like they're over 10 bucks. Homunculus Horde, Stone Soul Sanctuary, Celestial Armor, Genesis Wave, Lunar Insight, and Prideful Parent. Oh, I thought that was a Cat Lord, the double Cat Lord for a minute, but it's not. Just a common. All right. Well, uh, we're almost halfway through this last box. So far, this last box... I feel like we started off super hot with our boxes, but our, ooh, Progenitus, Showcase, not Japanese, not Fractured Foil, but it looks so good. It looks so good. I'm not even an anime fan. Ooh, another Bloodthirsty Conquer. I'm glad we've opened, I think, four of those. <laughs> that is a win. That is a win. Oops. Didn't want that card anyway. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, okay, we're heating up. We're heating up. Still a few more packs for the Fractured Foil. Can we get a Fractured Foil? Just any Fractured Foil. Seer Slicer Goblin. Leyline Axe. <laughs> Good old Leyline Axe. Wouldn't be a collector box opening without a huge pile of Leyline Axes. I don't know. Leylines can be busted, right? Maybe Leyline Equipment's busted, too. And we look back in six months and we're happy that we opened <laughs> ten Leyline Axes in our <laughs> collector booster boxes. Ooh. Oh, Mana Foil. Curator of Destinies. Is this card good enough? Six mana, five, five flying can't be countered. When it enters, you do a four card kind of weird factor fiction. I feel like it would have been. Catlin, I feel like it would have been a good control finisher. It would have been a good control finisher. Uh, expensive Sphinx Snapcaster thing. I think it was the first time we opened one of those. I feel like that card might be too expensive. Um... But yeah, as far as uh, as far as the curator, I feel like oh, you can actually feel the mana symbols. That's kind of cool. It's actually raised. I feel like it would have been a good control finisher in other formats. But kind of like we've been talking about, oh, Kellen looks like a good amount of red card. But does it work in the pump spell decks that are so popular right now? The most popular control decks are like caretaker talent decks. Oh, 
God, why do we... Our special guests have been so bad. Condemn! Again! Zamone! Archmager runes! Nine lives familiar! Preposterous proportions! Yeah, I feel... Ooh. <laughs> Uh, I feel like wizards did that just for me. Th this is really the only important open of the box is our, our foil bugler rat. In standard forever, which means uh, you get at least five more years of me. And you until, uh, <laughs> until you turn me off. Uh, nah, another curator destiny. Scrawling crawler. We're running out of time. This box is also kind of flopped. It's kind of funny. I feel like our first three boxes were just bangers. Two packs to go. Come on, Fractured Foil. But I feel like our last two boxes, I don't know, maybe when we add it up, it'll be better than I think. But I feel like the last two, way worse than the first three. Nine Lives Familiar, Kaikar, Sylvan Scavenging, Alicia, Atali, Burner Shark, some Rat Cards, Refew. All right, last pack. Last pack, last shot at it. All right, it's a Fractured Foil. We're going to do it in reverse. We're going to do it in reverse for the drama. So if we do this properly, uh, this should be a token. Yup. That should be our uh, Fractured Foil. These should be our rares, I believe. And then I think these are, yeah, lands, hair apparent? Nope, no hair apparent. All right, so this is this is the, the big one here. What do we get in our rares? Slagstorm Foil. Loot, Exuberant Explorer Foil. Kiora the Rising Tide, non-foil, extended. Herald of Eternal Dawn, extended, non-foil, and Fractured foil what? Oh, all right. Well, not fractured foil, but that is a pretty nice looking Fraxine Arena. Uh, pretty sure I can find a commander deck for that. Well, that's Foundations, five booster boxes. This set's so sweet. So my guess is first three boxes, great, great, great. Last two boxes, not great, not great. But I'm gonna do the math. I'm gonna add up all the numbers. You probably already know by now because I'm putting them up on screen. But I'm gonna do the math so I know, and uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes with a wrap up. All right, future Seth here to wrap up our foundations boxes. And it was a weird one. So I gotta say, I love this at Foundations. The reprints are super nostalgic. The showcase treatments look sweet. The new cards are cool. So the set itself is super sweet. But value-wise, I do not know what to make of this set. So like our last opening, since we're in pre-sales, price is super inflated. I knocked 40 to 50% off the value of the non-reprinted new cards in the set because we know that's how much prices typically drop after a set releases to try to get a realistic look at the value. And using that method, Overall, if you had all of our boxes together, we actually did pretty fine, right? We ended up like plus $70 in value, roughly plus $60 in value. But if you look at our individual boxes, we opened five of them. Three of them were straight up losers that we lost value on. One of them broke even. And then one box, box number two, was plus $190 in value. So pretty much all of our value comes from that one box. And really, it all comes from a single card, the Twin Flame Tyrant, the foil Japanese showcase version. And I gotta say, I don't have a ton of confidence in the pricing of that card right now. Same with like the Lana War Elves. The showcase cards are just so incredibly rare. The like foil Japanese ones, they're so incredibly rare that it's super hard to get good pricing on these. I couldn't find completed listings anywhere where people actually bought the cards. They're out of stock on pretty much all the sites. And the few copies I could find listed places were like $250, $300. Whether or not it's actually realistic that we can get $250 or $300 for that Twin Flame Tire I don't really know. Same with the Lana War Elves. Like, I couldn't find any of those showcase Lana War Elves sold anywhere. But if you find listings, they're like $150 or something. And I just can't get myself to believe that someone's actually paying $150 for a fancy Lana War Elves. So I listed them for $50, and I'm still not even sure people paid $50 for them. So all this to say... Whether or not we actually came out ahead on these boxes is almost exclusively going to depend on how well we can do on those foil showcase cards, right? Uh, if we can get somewhere near what people are asking for them, we are going to come out pretty good on these boxes. If it turns out that that Twin Flame Tyrant is actually 50 bucks instead of 250 once people actually start buying the cards, then it's going to look a lot, lot worse. But it is notable that out of our five boxes, 80% were break-even or worse, and 20% 
the one box was actually profitable. So keep that in mind, if you're just opening one box of foundations, it seems pretty realistic that you could kind of low roll, not hit a good showcase card, and end up losing value. So it might be one of those sets where overall, you're just better off snagging singles because the risk is too high and you're so dependent on hitting one of those ultra rare showcase cards. But like I said, this set's super cool. So even if the value is not good, it's still really fun to open. Of course, if you need any of the cards we open today, you can snag them from our sponsored Card Kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. And if you want to sell some of your cards you should head over to cardconduit.com slash mtg goldfish anyway everyone thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed our foundations opening and i'll be back in the future with another one so until then have a spectacular day and i will talk to you soon looking for even more magic well you can check out our mystery booster 2 opening here or maybe the video where i bought magic packs from a dollar store